Fair enough. <laughs> um, so I am Brendan. Um, Andy and I both met at university. And my sort of whiskey like journey started with a trip to Isla with some friends after we finished uni. And um, we went round to all the distilleries on a taxi tour. And um, there's always, I think everyone has that one whiskey where you get it and everything just sort of clicks. And you're like, yeah, I get it now. I really love this. And for me, that was at Brooklady and I had their bare barley. Um, so that was like the sort of start of my whiskey journey and like why I started to like whiskey. Um, could that be the 26 other whiskeys I'd had across the whole day? Perhaps, but there's always one that clicks. Maybe it's just a few down the line. So yeah, that's where um, that's where my sort of whiskey interest started. And then from there, Andy and I both sort of uh, started going to tastings together and uh, became more and more um, aware of how whiskey was made, the sort of intricacies, etc. cetera. Um, and then sort of leading to starting our business and brand is we... We had we both left university and went into day jobs in the aerospace industry, and it wasn't giving us everything that we wanted, and we wanted to put our passion into something else. And we loved whiskey, so that's exactly where we started. And um, we sat down one night and got the Octave collection from Ad Rattray. I'm sure maybe you guys have heard of Ad Rattray, Clydeside um, Distillery, and it involved a single cask of um, Old Pulteney brandy. Yeah, aye, Old Pulteney. It was a single cask of Old Pulteney. And um, these six drams from this one cask, one from the original cask and five other ones from uh, octaves, like really small casks that had been matured for five months, like a Rioja, a rum, different types of sherry. Um, and we sat down and just tried them side by side and we loved how the cask had just made that difference to each of these whiskies, but how similar they were as well. And we just thought, like, this is amazing. Why is why is no one showcasing this? Um, and then the more we dug into it, it's like 70% of the flavor comes from the cask itself. It's like, that's such a massive amount and 100% of the color. Like, this is fascinating to us, like, loved it. So we wanted to bring something uh, that would showcase the influence of the cask and allow the drinker to see, smell, and taste the difference that the cask can make to the flavor and to shape the characteristics. So we knew what we wanted to do, we just didn't know how to present it. And like lots of things with uh, whiskey, it's, uh, it's romanticized, it's all about the story. And we, when we started exploring uh, purchasing our first cask, we, we'd heard that casks are filled together, like one after each other are called sister casks. And we thought that was really nice. Loved that. So why can't we have brother bottles? And so the name was born Nebraran, which is Gaelic for the brothers. Contrary to popular belief, Andy and I are not brothers. Um, I know we look similar. I, I, I just shave my head for fun. Um, <laughs> um, we're not, but we're not related at all. We're just completely friends. So that's, where the, that's where it started. We wanted to showcase the, the effect of the cask with our brother bottles. And uh, since then, we released our first release in 20... The start of 2020 uh, with a Kalila, um, which was absolutely brilliant. And that was... Uh, that involved taking one single cask of Kalila that had been matured for eight years in a bourbon's hogshead. We split the cask in half and bottled the Wee Brother. <coughs> and then put the rest of the liquid into a PX Sherry quarter cast, so a much smaller cast to give it loads of surface contact, loads of uh, influence from the cask. And that was our big brother. So the drinker could see how these two different whiskies came from the one cask, but had finished their maturation process in different ways. Loads of similarities, but have a unique flavor profile that has brought them from the cask. Um, so yeah, and that's, um, that's, so we are today, we've had two more releases um, and some of which we're going to try tonight. Um, Andy, do you want to take us through what ones we're going to go through? Yeah, aye, no bother. So, <clears throat> as Brendan said, it, it'd be good if uh, if you've got a couple of glasses there. Uh, it's just good to, you know, try the two side by side. Um, so what we've got tonight, we've got two brother pairs that we've brought 
And we've also got two cask samples uh, that we've drawn out of, of our cask, especially for this tasting. Um, so we'll finish on on those the the cast strength ones just to to see everyone off. <laughs> but um, all right, so getting them in order, we'll start with the Ben Rennes wee brother and the Ben Rennes big brother. Right, well, what was it? Ben Rennes. Right. Uh, so I'm just trying to get them organised myself, and then we will be going on to the wee brother Glen Cadam, nine year old, and the big brother Glen Cadam, nine year old. You recommend calling them all just now, just to let them read a bit. Aye, aye. If you've got if you've got enough glasses, then I've 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 got two Glen Cairns with me. Um, but if you've got enough glasses, there by by all means, get them pulled. But um, yeah, so after I will go with, uh, following from the Glen Cadden Big Brother, we're going with the Glen Burgey, which is a cast sample, and then we've got a Lechig as well at the end, which is another cast sample. Uh, aye, and as we're going through, guys, just any questions or that, you know, we'll take a wee break after we try each each pair, and feel free to sort of uh, chip in if you've got any questions or anything. So. Is there any questions or anything that's pressing and you don't want to speak over? Please just put it in the chat and we'll, we will come back to uh, after each pair. I think usually what they do, like, uh, if I do, they just put themselves on mute as well. Um, but if you want to talk or if you want to ask a question, just feel free to unmute yourselves and chip in and ask absolutely anything you want. Um, we want everyone to get involved as well. We don't want this to be a lecture. Um, so, Normally, normally we like to sort of be blow a bit. Usually after a couple of grams, it does that anyway. So, um, I feel free to chip in anyone. Exactly, guys. There's no uh, questions that are out of bounds. Just ask anything at all with the business, the whiskey, anything. We're happy to chat away. Right, so. Hopefully everyone's got the the wee brother Ben Venice uh, poured. So just a little bit about this whiskey. This is our second uh, our second release, following on from our Kalila. Uh, as Brendan said, we sort of started about mid twenty twenties when we launched our first bottle, which was a great idea in, in the middle of a, a pandemic. Uh, we we had actually it's a funny story actually we had started the business right before everything kind of shut down. We'd been going to you know, jumping in and out of the bars in Glasgow, going to the Good Spirits Company and stuff like that. And we had a, a bunch of orders and a bunch of interest for our first ever release. And then COVID hit, literally the, I think it, must, I think it was the day after we, or the day before we released. Um, so obviously there was, you know, all the bars and, and stuff that had placed orders had shut down. So shut down, but they shut down temporarily. Um, So yeah, the cask after the week when we really just wanted to get another one out in time for Christmas. Uh, the opportunity came up to buy these uh, two Ben Rennes and we we got to finish them in Fernando de Castilla uh, sherry cask. So we've got an Oloroso sherry, which is this wee brother. And then we've got a PX sherry finish, uh, which is our big brother. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a really nice sherry for anyone that's tried Fernando de Castilla sherry. It's, it's well known. But yeah, the first thing you notice from the all or is just that sweetness coming through on the nose. Sorry about this. I got called away at the at the start there a little bit. Uh, which ones are we looking to start with? Uh, no worries, Dave. It's the it's the all or also we brother Ben Rennes. Says not veteran. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so it's the. Nabraran wee brother, eleven year old, uh, distilled at Ben Rennes Distillery. The wee brother. White label. White label. Right? Yeah, white label. Yeah. The forty-eight percent one. Yeah. No problem. I ordered two lots. We've got uh, somebody else doing it at a at a distance. <laughs> ah, no worries. Yeah, so for, we watered this down to forty-eight percent, 
think our thinking behind that was uh, so our fu- our first release, Kalila, was uh we released that at Cash Strength. Really, our reason for that was just because. It's funny, we actually spent a lot of time thinking about what to bottle our first ever release, like what ABV to put it as. And we asked a lot of sort of friends and family and and uh, people that we knew within sort of whiskey circles. And in the end, we decided to go with cash strength uh, purely because that allowed the drinker to add water to their taste. Uh, you know, you can't go backwards, but you can always dilute it down. So that's what we went for in a Kalila. And uh, we ended up coming out at 60.2%. So it was it was uh, quite punchy, but yeah, with this one coming up to Christmas, we really just wanted something that was really easy drinking, something that you would sit on a table uh, and sort of pass around. Um, so that's why we went for this. But yeah, we'll go ahead and Does anyone else get that sort of sweetness on the nose, mm-hmm. kind of hun- honey vanilla, like if any like incredible, like it's like really fruity as well. It's like the thing that's popping out to me mostly. Yeah. A little bit of sherbet lemon. No, definitely. It's quite a Ben Rennes itself is quite a like quite a meaty spirit. So it's it's mostly been used in blends. I believe there's only been one official distillery release, which is the uh, as a single malt, which is the 15 year old Flora and Fauna. Yeah, that's right. Uh, which is a brilliant whiskey. One of my favourite whiskies. Um, it's a totally underrated single malt, in my opinion. Um, but it's just a classic space aid. On the palate, it's kind of sweet Christmas cake uh, notes, uh, for myself at least, and then a kind of smooth finish. So this one was definitely by far the most popular out of our two Ben Rennes releases. Um, it's got a nice nose to it. Yeah, it's one that we uh, anyone who's not really a whiskey drinker and wants to try something that's uh, easy to start with, it's the one we always point towards. Um, definitely smooth, easy. Yeah, nice. Uh, particular for last release, what made you choose which one for Wee Brother and Big Brother? So, like, there, there wasn't you have used two different casts in particular to finish. Which what why did you choose the all or also for Wee Brother and the PX for Big Brother? I think uh, for us <coughs> for us the, the sort of we so we had samples drawn from each of them and to be honest it was just we you know we tried the for, for me the the all or also was much easier to drink. Um the PX when we go on to try it next is is a wee bit more refined. Uh, so I guess that's why we sort of thought of that one as the wee brother and big brother. Typically, what we would do is when we separate the casks, you know, one's always bottled before the other. Mm. Uh, so one will be bottled straight away and the other one is finished for a period of time. So that's what gives that wee brother, big brother. So with this release, both being 11-year-old um, and both being re-racked and bottled at the same time, these are, I guess, are more like kind of twin bottles, what we have here. Uh, but yeah, as, as I said, the wee brother for me is so easy to drink um, and the big brother when we go in to try it there's a wee bit more to it no, cheers that's a nice drink the point is the big Miss Glows and things like that like the wee brother thing will become more apparent as well um, as you like the age and things like that you can have one that are three four five years of a difference aye uh, no exactly it's a very good concept. I just like it, yeah. We're, we're uh, you know, we have so much fun doing it, you know, getting to choose this sort of stuff ourselves. It's like the best part of what we're doing. It's great. Um, and on that, make sh- try and keep a wee bit back, guys, so you can go between the two brothers. It's really, that's what, um, I, I know I know it's easy for some people, uh, harder for some people to hold back. But... I know you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but I so I guess we'll move on to our, our big brother then so this is the the PX sherry finish so the difference really between the sherries is in the well the, Ped, the PX the Pedro Jimenez is a variety of grape um, some of you might know so 
they're sort of dried out in the sun, um, you know, before being uh, been made into sherry with it all or also what happens is the liquid is explo- exposed to the air, uh, so it oxidizes quite a bit quicker, so it doesn't have that sort of floor protection, which if you've ever been to a bodega in Spain, you kind of see that thick white layer um, on the top of, of the sherry. Uh, so that's what gives it all the rosso, that sweetness. The PX is a little bit more, as I said, refined, a little bit more spicier, a little bit more floral. And I, I think, for me anyway, on the nose, you get that straight away. Which one's the big brother? The big brother is the the Pedro Jimenez, the PX Sherry finished. Um, so it's a black label. Two of my black labels are the same. There should be... I have got a Ladeg. 11-year-old, Thomas. 50, sorry? There should be 11-year-old black label. My two, my two 11-year-olds are both the same. If you look just under it, um, the one should say Ben Rennes. No. Nope. And the other, so the Ben Rennes ones are the one we're printing. They both, they both say Tobermory Distillery. Oh, do they? And the other, the other nine-year-old big brother says... Those two, I think, are... Uh, Glenn Cadham. I can't be. Yeah, they should be oh. different. Apologies for that. That's been a I thought when I got them, I meant to contact you when I got them because I thought them two has to be the same. That one. They are meant to be different. Apologies for that. They were the same. Sorry. Different. For the Ben Rennes. No, it's not a problem. Don't worry. I'm enjoying this wee brother. <laughs> I'll not be keeping any bag for later. <laughs> that, that one's uh, that one's gold dust. So. Uh, yeah, Dev, but no, apologies for that. We'll get one sent out to you just so you can try it as well. Yeah, right, we've got a few Thank you very much. Got a few no. samples left back. We, we did sell out of this pretty quickly. I think it was two, was it two or three months. I think Brendan was sold out. Um, like I'll do you, I'll do your swap. One of these for one of yours. <laughs> um, by it was it's a pretty limited release, you know. As we said, it was it was octaves, uh, Fernando de Castilla octaves that we had made up for these. Uh, so I think we had was it 75 bottles of each was the yeah. outrun. Um, but yeah, so moving on to the the big bar again. Do you notice that sort of difference? That is like quite a bit more floral than the last one. a bit drier for me as well. I don't know. I don't know. Definitely drier, yeah. Yeah. What was the the, um, the time for the finish? How long? Six months. Six. So each each of these was six months, yeah. Uh, because, obvi- it, you know, obviously we've got the... So we've got an octave, it's like, a, because it's a smaller cask, there's much more surface contact. Yeah. Uh, with the whiskey. So, you know, it takes on that flavour a lot quicker. Um, it's a lot yeah, it's 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 a lot more complex of flavour compared yeah. to the first one. Yeah. It's interesting just to try the, you know, you can really taste the difference between the sherries. Yeah, much longer finish on the the big brother. Yeah, oh, yeah. huge, huge. Yeah, I'm liking the mouthfeel on that one, it's very yeah. uh, vibrant on the mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. That's the the thing we found was uh, people that weren't big on whiskey loved the wee brother, but the whiskey drinker loved the big brother for all those exact reasons that you said. It's just there's a bit more complexity to it. Um, yeah, I love them both. To be honest with you, <laughs> they're great. Is there any favourites between the two? Does anyone get any? <clears throat> both for different reasons. Uh, yes, it's hard to like say one or the other. I'm um, personally, I like a, quite a complex dam, a wee bit more of a kick to it, a wee bit that hangs around a bit longer. So I definitely prefer the Big Brother, but they're both absolutely smashing. They're yeah. both fantastic. Aye. No, they're good. No, we're pretty we're chuffed with those ones. Uh, we reckon, we don't know for certain, but we reckon the, most of the maturation was done in a refill uh, bourbon hogshead. Um which we've actually become quite accustomed to enjoying because the, you know, 
the, some of the bourbon flavor has been taken away. So the more of the distillery character is like more prominent there. And that's why you kind of get that biscuity cereal taste lingering in the back of both those drams. It sort of joins them together. That's what I love about them. Yeah, I know. And for, for me as well, I think personally, I, I like a stronger whiskey, but personally, I think 48 for these ones was was right, especially for the wee brother. I think, uh, I, think, I think we got kind of lucky in that respect in that, you know, we picked 48% after sort of trying the sample and adding a wee bit of water. And then we were thinking, right, that's, that's right. We'll bottle it at that. And what it came out was... Uh, you know, it was loved by a lot of people. And what was surprising to us was a, a lot of non-whiskey drinkers. And that's what Bren was saying about that wee brother. It was just so easy to drink, um, so smooth. And, and you, as well, because it's 48, you don't get that alcohol burn. You taste a lot more of the flavour. I think as well, the with the sh- these sherry octaves being sort of first fill Fernando de Castilla as well, plays such a vital role on the sort of finishing process is the quality of the cast that you're finishing in. A touch of water brings out a whole heap of raisins in the Big Brother. Massive amount of raisin and sweet fruits. I was about to ask that, like, the, um, you see much difference with any water. So, thanks, Stephen. <laughs> that's exactly that was fine. Fantastic. I'm just doing the wee trick that me and Jerry do. Take a glass of water, you swig a bit of water, and then take the take the dram. That way, you're not drowning your whiskey straight off. And it's. Uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's a bit smoother that way, but I like cask whiskey as it is. So, yeah, it's interesting just to get the, t- the, the both sides of the coin. If you want to use that that expression, with and without. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a very nice single malt. Uh, you know, as I said, it's totally underrated. Uh, mostly used for I think Johnny Walker. I believe I think it is Brendan, isn't it, Johnny Walker? Um, but a brilliant, brilliant single malt. Uh, the flora and fauna one's unbelievable as well. Um, I'd have loved to be able to get our hands on a cask of a 15-year-old version of this just to compare. Uh, but no, uh, we we're very happy with the way this one turned out. What I've just done is actually combined the tiny last wee bit of each one together. And that's just something else again. Just the two competing sherries. Yeah, it's uh, you're not the first person to do that. A few people do that with uh, a few of the drams, and it's um, it's something we've thought about as well in terms of you know when you try these like uh, Cahoma and Loch comes to mind for example, and they tell you the split of all the also to bourbon or PX to whatever sherry it is, and that's great, uh, and you can kind of see putting them together how they work. And it's for me, it's also nice to see how they individually come together and what brings what because everyone can say oh it's a sherry or it's this much all or also it's like well which one do i actually like um what does all or also do to my dram compared to like 60 percent all or also like what is that but yeah definitely blend them together is such a nice way to see how they come together and ah you're right they're bang on as well aren't they and they go very well together oh that's fantastic uh, i probably wouldn't have thought of doing that that's great um, Aye, unfortunately, there's there's none there's none of these ones left, um, especially the wee brother. I don't think we even both of us never even managed to get our hands on the wee brother. And for me, it's probably one of our uh, well, apart from our first release, it is the my favourite whiskey that we've uh, you know we've released. Oh, definitely. I think I've got one one up behind me, but a failed order to Canada. I think's taken that one off our hands, so. Pray, pray, God, it, because it is. It's just such a. I think the issue is, it's because it's so easy drinking. You can have a lot. Um, but I know it's brilliant. Is there any questions about the Ben Rennes at all? Yeah, what, what, what's the name of the bodega? Uh, Fernando de Castilla. Fernando de Castilla. Yeah. yeah so it's from the. Uh, well, I, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but the Jerez. Juarez, yeah. Jerez, yeah. uh, region of um, Spain. Yeah. The culture called Marnock Man. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, 
an octave worth of, of each bottle that was released. So it was about 45 bottles for each release, was it? Uh, 75. 75, you got it right. 75, cool. yeah. So. That's, a good, that's a good return. What kind yeah. of price point were the bottles? What were, I can't remember, Ben, what these ones were at. This... Five pounds as well. So again? What was it? 75 pounds. Yeah, 75. How do you guys find that if you're being a small independent, mm -hmm. uh, independent bottlers, getting your hands on things like these casts and getting the choice and find it quite difficult or has it been quite, has it been all right? Like what, what's the process been like? Um, it's, no, it's, it's not really difficult. Uh, there's always, there's always interesting casks uh, that sort of come and go. I think what what we do is we, we never want to... There's a lot of independent bottles that will buy every cask that they can or every cask that's affordable and, and they'll bottle absolutely everything, whereas we like to wait for something that we really like and if we can get a sample of it, brilliant. Occasionally, you have to buy blind, but even if we do buy blind, we'll sort of... We, as soon as we buy that cask, we'll draw it out, we'll taste it, and we'll think, right, that's maybe that'll be ready in a couple of years or in the same way we decide the finish of it as well, that would be nice for this finish. Mm -hmm. uh, actually getting the cash, so we have to go through brokers um, at the moment. I think a lot of distilleries have sort of clocked on to the, like, they don't they don't sell cash anymore, so you are buying off of brokers. Mm -hmm. So that sort of limits what you can get your hands on straight away. But I wouldn't say it's hard. You know, there's a lot of cash out there. And I think when we when we first get into the business, we get told that whiskey's a great business to get into if you've got a lot of time or a lot of money. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot there, there is a lot of cash out there. It's just getting something that's ready to bottle because you've got the you, you know again a lot of time and a lot of money. So a lot of money for an older whiskey, but a, a whiskey that's perfect to bottle. Um, or we've got the option of buying young and sort of aging. We aim for somewhere in the middle. Um, so our first release was an uh, eight-year-old Kalula that we bought. Uh, and second was this 11-year-old Ben Rennes. Okay. Have you guys thought, thought that you're aging somewhere? Like, have you got tasks that you've brought and you're planning, like, two, three, four, five years down the line? That's a sort of release. Yeah, I mean, we're... Currently, we're planned up to like halfway through next year, like hopefully getting four releases out every year uh, going forward. So that that's kind of where we're at just now. And the more we grow, hopefully that can be extended and get more exciting casks, etc. Um, I would say just to uh, extend on sort of Kieran's question is, and what Andy said is like buying blinds maybe the biggest risk we've got. Um, however, like we make sure that we have good suppliers and like who we work with quite closely, like very trustworthy and we've got a really good relationship with them that's like a massive massive thing and like so far everyone in the industry is so helpful and really kind and there's not that many crooks out there so although there are probably some we've just kept our circle to who, who we know um but we always make sure we bottle good stuff which is i think the main point mm -hmm. Buying sell tasks as well. Um, I think whiskey brokers like they've just said that they're not going to sell any more tasks unless the, like there's going to be much more betting involved. I've seen that. Like that. So. I've seen that. You know, it's it's a, it's a bit of a grey area. If you well, it, for a lot of guys that they're operating in a grey area, it's just you need to make sure you go to the right, go through the right channels. As Brendan mm -hmm. says, get in the right circles because I. There's a lot of guys. Uh, I I seen that post from Whiskey Broker too, and it was, um, you know, it's it's no different. I it's no no different from someone just owning a cask at Whiskey Broker and calling themselves a cask broker. And they offer you a cask to invest in, but it's never in your name. They're the one that own. They're the one that hold it. You know. Yeah. Uh, but I it's it's no difficult, and there's there is. There's a lot of good casts that sort of come and go, and it's just a bit for us. It's just a bit sitting waiting to find one that we like. I think another risk we've got is that our our individual taste. <laughs> so sometimes Brendan will pick something, and I'll, I'll taste it. And I'll, that's 
that's rubbish. <laughs> but uh, just wanna, I, uh, can I stick on that point a wee second? We had a tasting prior to this, and uh, there was a cask that we drew a sample from, and and Andy said it's terrible. And uh, I tried it and I thought it was brilliant. Took it to a tasting and it was the favourite. So before that, I thought Andy had a better uh, palate, but <laughs> I've been champion since then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mention that every time, don't I, Andy? I think so, aye. I think so. so um, I, I'm just wrong. the two of you making the decision, you don't have somebody having a cast and vote just in case, no? Well, it's funny you say it. we've actually got a friend who like, we wrote a contract between ourselves who's uh, one of our friends who's a cast and vote but um, I think Andy and I are both more scared of his vote than uh, ourselves <laughs> Do you bottle it yourselves? Do you go to a bottling hall and do the bottling yourself or do you get somebody to do the bottling for you? We get everything done like in terms of the bottling and the handling of the cast third party that's a lot of that's to do with uh, licensing and sort right. of uh, stuff like that. We'd love to do it ourselves. It'd be great. And um, that's that's the dream. That's the, the end goal, really, to do everything ourselves. Yeah. Um, I, at the moment, at the moment, we're using whiskey broker. Uh, the majority of folk do use whiskey broker for doing stuff. And I, they're massive. They're oh. huge. I think I recently, but we we get in with them quite early. But I seen. I think it was last, or there was a period of time last year when they actually stopped taking casks because they had that many folk, uh, they had that many casks that they were stored and they just ran completely ran out of space. Um, but I, they, they've got they've got a great selection of casks as well. I mean, I don't know if you've tried any of the bottlings from them. They're under, oh. and, and great great price point on them as well. Yeah, um, great price point on them. But yeah, I think you've got one as well, Brendan. You. You've got a couple of whiskey broker bottles, don't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like keeping them sweet, though, is there? No, ah, exactly. Oh, aye. Um, shall we move on to the Glen Cadden guys? Yeah. So if you just maybe pour out the wee brother and the big brother for this, that'd be great. Um. So yeah. So the Glen Cadden cask, this is something that's been the, it was, it was kind of me who decided that I wanted to get this one, and um, mostly because it's where I'm from, like Brecon, up in Glen, Glen Cadden's up in Brecon, and I'm from a wee town called Kirimir next to uh, Brecon. Um, no, I'm not a farmer, we've already just discussed that, I, I don't I don't farm, but um <laughs> So that's that was a close one to me, and it's also a dram that I tried. I bought from Amazon a couple of years back, the the ten year old Glen Cadam, and um, thirty five pound or something. I just thought, what what a great price point. May as well try it. And I just thought it was the freshest dram I'd ever tried. Like, why have I not heard of this? Totally underrated. So when I, when we seen when we seen the opportunity to get the Glen Cadam cask, I was like. And it was a bourbon cask. I was like, I want to try that because I want to see what the difference is, first of all, from the official bottling to like a cask sample of that. Like how like how good is it? So um yeah, so that's kind of like where the inspiration for that one came from. And Glen Caram, if you've not tried it, great Highland distillery. Um used to be used in blends for years, been there for a while, but then I think 2005 was bought over by Angus Dundee Distillers. And they start bringing out their own sort of expressions. Um, I've not had too many of them. I've just had the ten-year-old, I think, as far. But apparently, all brilliant, great drams. Um, so yeah, so we got the opportunity to buy this, um, the wee brother, which I've just got here now, um, which was the bourbon cask. So for this one, we bought the bourbon cask, which had been aged for nine years, and. We split that and finished the other half in a heavy char. So the wee brother, there is actually an age difference between these, even though they're both nine years old. There's a three-month age difference. So we'll start with this one, and then we'll move on to the, the big brother. So when we did a sample of this, we it was quite strong still, but the first thing that came to us when we tried it was chewy, like massive, big, chewy drama, like coated the mouth, syrupy, like brilliant. 
So we want to keep that as high in ABV as possible. So we settled on 55% because it's where we wanted to drink it, plus a bit to suit everyone's taste. So on the nose, you can kind of get citrus, heather, and there's almost a touch of like tropical, tropical sort of tropical hops. Um, give it a try. I get that citrusy, orangey. Mm. Nice. I'm, getting a bit, I'm getting a bit of hops and nettle tea. Yeah, you, you, do, you do get that sort of... Um, I think the 10-year-old uh, from the distillery, I think they say it's like got a grassy sort of flavour. And I mm. think with this, it's almost a bit... Because of the higher ABV, you've got more of an intensity. So that's where you're getting maybe yeah. hot nettle, exactly. And then as soon as you get on the palate, it's, you get the, the honey... It's like a floral sort of honey flavor, vanilla, classic bourbon flavors, plus the sort of um, citrusy as well. Really great. And then, I quote, can I quote some mouth as well? This one, I think, like when we first drew the sample from the cast, that that was a standout thing to us about this whiskey was how much it sort of it kind of oily coating in the mouth. And when we went to sort of bottle this and we're deciding right what ABV do we bottle this at and the more we reduce it you kind of reduce that oiliness so again that's why we kind of kept it high um because mm. to us that was that was really something that stood out about this whiskey uh well for me anyway no definitely that's what Andy Andy got the samples delivered to him and first thing he said he said like it just coats him mouth and we want to keep that um and I think we've we've kept it pretty good like try a bit of water in that as well guys like so it is quite strong, but for me, like, this is a perfect ABV. You can, you can kind of get the, the cereal sort of note at the end. It kind of tails off quite nicely, a nice finish. Quite a long finish as well. Yeah. Anyone get any thoughts on that one, guys, compared to the Ben Venice or, or just in I, general? I, I, I love bourbon cask and that, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot fresher. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm quite. I think I'm like a seasonal whiskey drinker. It's over winter, mm. it's nothing better than being out a walk with the dog, get in, get a nice Lafroy or something nice and peaty and warming. <laughs> We're into this time of year and a day like we've had today. See, like a really fresh, crisp, citrusy dram. It yeah. just the spot in a day like today, and it's just. I that, totally agree. Yeah. That's exactly, that's why we, re we released this at the start of February, I think, and that's exactly what we wanted, a springtime drama, and this was, uh, this was the one, this was definitely the one. Um, but yeah, it is a total classic bourbon-style uh, maturation whiskey, um, matured the whole time in a bourbon cask, just really what it's my, one of my favourite drams, brilliant, and I think it does... Although the 10 year old from the distillery is brilliant, great release. I think this really shows the potential that Glen Cadam really does have with that bit of higher ABV. Um, yeah. So, I could send the distillers tasting. We've done three Glen Cadams and three Tom and Tools. Oh, yeah. Can't remember, can't even remember the ages, but they all they were all that characteristic, like really, really fresh, really crisp, refreshing drams. They were fantastic. Aye. And getting to try it at the, the higher ABVs are an absolute treat. It's, it's great. No, the, the grassiness, like, like I said, it's the grassiness that see, seems to stay consistent throughout the uh, Glen Cadam. And um, yeah, Seema said, like the nettle, it's more intense sort of grassy flavours as you get higher ABV, which I think is just brilliant. To totally, again, like, same as Ben Rennes, like underrated, totally underrated drum. Um, so... We knew that when we when we drew that one, we drew the sample from that, we knew that we loved that as is. We know like, that's a wee brother. I sailed half that cask is going to be bottled as a wee brother. Um, and we, I loved the, or we both loved the honey sort of uh, note in there, the sweetness. So like, we wanted to do something with that and almost add like a, a spiciness to the, the sweetness. Oh, sorry, that drop out a wee second, sorry. Uh, so it was the honey note that we loved, but we wanted to make that almost like a bit of spice to it, add some a bit extra to that sort of sweetness, maybe dampen the sweetness slightly. So that brings us on to the Big Brother. And just, if you've got two glasses, guys, like, 
try and have them side by side, like the color difference, that's three months, three months in a different cask. And it just shows you the influence of the cask on the color. It's, it's brilliant. All Just um, to clarify, all our cask, all our releases are natural color, on chill filtered. So we never add any color and never add, never chill filtration. So it's the full, the full whack. And the color difference, you know, you're getting more amber color there. Absolutely brilliant. So that was like a, it's a, well, we called it a, a heavy char octave finish. So octave being like um, 50, but around 50 to 60 liters. But it was actually more of a custom cast. It's slightly bigger than that. But being heavy char, uh, for those who are not aware, it's like when all casks are um, built, they char the inside with fire just to seal it, release the, the sugars and the tannins from the wood, and that's what gives us the whiskey its colour, flavour, etc. So we used a virgin oak octave, eh, octave sort of custom cask, and we got it to like got the guys at the cooperage to char it as heavily as possible, also known as alligator char. So that makes, you can almost imagine charcoal pops out, loads of surface contact, like really dark wood, black, black wood, and it imparts all that color and imparts all that flavor, which is really, really what we're looking for. Try and get those oaky, spicy notes to dampen the sort of sweetness and give a bit of spice to that. One of the biggest risks with that is it's, it can almost overpower the flavor of the whiskey. So this is one of the samples that we, one of the whiskeys, sorry, that we continuously monitored and got samples out as much as we could so we would make sure we didn't overcook it. Uh, that was the biggest risk we had for this one. But um, I, you can you get it on the nose right away. The, yeah, yeah. A lot a, sweeter. It's a lot sweeter, but it's also got a sort of like a barbecued pineapple. Yeah. Exactly. You're getting the... Or is it, or is it pineapple or is it... Oh, sorry, that, is, that, that, that is one of the tasting notes that we've got from it as well. That we've got, you know, on the website is, um, you know, you do get a kind of pineapple from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just much more oaky for me. Like there's a, yeah. lot, a lot more of that wood coming through. I like to think of... Um... We've almost taken all the tasting notes from the wee brother and added like, um, I mean, what do we have on the website? It's like, so it was citrus, but it's like a peppery citrus now. It's like a, instead of like a, like a fresh fruit, it's almost like a dried mango spiciness. And on the nose as well, like the vanilla, uh, the palate, sorry, the vanilla, um, <laughs> I, went, I must say I went, I went a wee bit pretentious here, Andy. <laughs> Went with so from vanilla bean to went to tonka bean, which is almost like a. <laughs> I can see you, Stephen. <laughs> What's a tonka bean? They're coming in a big yellow truck. <laughs> there's, this, uh, there's this donut place in Glasgow who do a tonka bean donut, and I was like, "What the hell is tonka bean?" And they're like, "It's like a spicy vanilla." So as soon as I tried that, I went, "That's that's a spicy vanilla," and that's exactly for me, ex nail on the head. Friday's a school day. What's well, that? Yeah. Friday's a school day. That's it. That's it. I mean, you got you got to be a wee bit a wee bit fancy with some of their tasting notes. I like this one, but I do personally prefer the wee brother Glen Caddam. Just yeah. like um, I don't know, like for me, it came across like much now of like almost orchard fruits to begin with, and that to me is more lost in this. Yeah. No. To be fair, I'm I'm the same as you. My taste. Which is interesting. My my taste usually is totally different from what I get from that wee brother and Cladden. But I think what you were saying, Kieran, it's it's a total summer drum. Yep. Um that one. Uh, and that's I, I I agree with you. I prefer I prefer that wee one, but it's it's interesting. Uh our, our, by far our big brother was the best seller and we've sold out of that now. Um the heavy char, I think there's what five Five bottles left of the Wee Brother Glen Cadden still on the website. Right. Um, so that that was our sort of current release, but no, I, I agree. Uh, I think I don't know. I think you prefer the Big Brother Brendan to. It's one of those ones where I can sort of swap backwards and forwards. It just depends on what it is, and and that's one of the the great things about the whiskey, and that that's, 
where we know we're, we're doing all right is because people have different favourites and it's that's what's great about it. Like, you know, it's so individual. Um, yeah, that's what I found there. Um, tried the wee brother, loved it. Tried the big brother and I thought, that's nice, but I think I prefer the wee brother. I went back and tried the wee brother. Yeah. And thought, no, wait a minute, that extra spiciness works in the big brother. So yeah, it's it's it, it, just marginal, but yeah, big brother. And with a tiny spot of water in your mouth, and the big brother, there's lots of uh, licorice and uh, trying to put my finger on it. Tonka bean. <laughs> Tonka bean. <laughs> yeah, everyone, uh, everyone, everyone I would I would have said more uh, poached pears mm-hmm. coming through in it. Just in the top notes, but the bass notes are nice and nice and heavy. And yeah, yeah, it definitely. It works with water. Yeah. yeah, it does work great with water. That one. I think, um, although they're both like, the, the, it was great. You can see the similarities between them. It's brilliant. Um, but they got great differences as well. But they both have that sort of chewy, syrupy mouth coating flavour to it, which we were so glad to keep. And I've still got that viscous feel in my mouth as well, which is really, really interesting as well. That's great. Me, it's the big brother. See the spicy are longer. Mm. They clear finish. I like, I just love a dram where you're still tasting it like 15 seconds after you've had your, your last one dram of it. Mm. Mm. Uh, For me, like, the steam says, like, I've got a water in your mouth and the big brother completely transformed it's just mm. that, 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 that that deep shade that then uh, poached um, pears that you say yeah. um, really comes through I think that sets off that bit of water oh, that's good what about anyone else is uh, anyone else got standout favourites from those two um... big brother for me nice I'm the same. I thought the wee brother, and then I went back to the big brother, and I'm very torn between the two of them. Are people yeah. getting the similarities as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the, the, you know, the base spirit, getting where that's coming from, getting, getting that. But I'm also really impressed with how three months has changed that that whiskey from the wee brother into that. That's really impressive. What I like about the whole concept is that for me personally, when you, you're looking at getting a bottle or you're going into a shop or browsing online, you're overwhelmed with the amount of choices now and finished in this cask, finishes here, what's what the additional cask enhancement, they've got all these stupid names for it now. Be like, I, like, I love what you guys do and I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass, but you kind of, it's not that you kind of trust Things be like they, they might have a take a draw off a cask and think, Oh, this isn't very good. Let's shove it in this particular finishing cask and we can charge it 70 quid a bottle and all the punters and none the wiser. I love the transparency that you guys have and that here's the drama as it is, first of all, with the wee brother, and we've done our finishing for however long, and here you can taste the difference. It's not like it's it's a great concept, and I think the transparency is great, and it allows you to, to draw the similarities between the drums. And I, I really think it's quite unique, and I certainly kind of think of anything similar where you can get that experience. And oh, that's great. yeah, that's bang on. Like it's something we discussed as well as, um, you know, you tried a a finished whiskey that's been finished in whatever lovely cask it is. It's like that's great. What it was like before? Has the cask actually done anything? Um, is it a market employee? Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if anyone's tried. For me, one of the most underwhelming drams of my life was a uh, Glenfiddich Winter Storm. It's it sounds great on paper. It's um, finished. What's what it? Is it Ace Wayne? Ace nah, Wayne. Nah. And it's just it literally. It's it's so underwhelming, and also they make it out that it's like this ice wine cask. It's been aged in, and it's literally been in there for for three months, which. If it's a, if it's a big cast, three months really really isn't much. If it's an if it's an octave, which I highly doubt it would be, yeah, then it's going to give a big influence. But um, 
No, exactly. We, we want to have like transparency, and it's like because whiskey's great no matter what. You just want to know more about it and be truthful. Mm. I think part 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 with our product as well is we really wanted to make something that wasn't. <clears throat> You know, we're not big into collecting whiskies ourselves. You know, we really wanted something that people wanted to drink. Um, and it made people want to sort of try the differences between the two. Uh, it was never about creating a, a big expensive whiskey. You know, for us, we want to, to make it as affordable as we possibly can. And for the reason that we want people to try it and see the difference, because it, that's what fascinated us. Um, so that's really where our whole sort of values lie uh, you know with our sort of business and the product yeah and a great business plan because people like me i'm like oh shit if i buy one of them i need to buy two of them Aye, we've, we've, <laughs> we, we all had that compliment from folk uh, uh, people in the industry that we've kind of uh, you know mentors and and such that we've sort of obtained have complimented us and uh, encourages folk to buy two bottles rather than one <laughs> It's, it's a stellar business practice that is it is it really is you know this is what it tastes like but this is what we've done to it. taste yeah. the difference that's really good but but i guess our angle is that it, you know it's really not it's really not a marketing thing for us it's it's about seeing that difference and experiencing it, it is really what we are trying to focus on yeah do you think you'd ever do like small packs just to like just wee tasting packs with the small, like the little brother and big brother and things like that, like maybe six or something like that, like the things grow yeah. or whatever. I know, totally. Uh, something that we we really wanted to look at, you know, we kind of looked at maybe doing smaller, um, you know, obviously our bottles in our 70 CL, we looked at doing sort of smaller uh, well, packages and selling them both together as a sort of kind of gift pack and stuff like that. We've not, we've not got that out yet, but it is in the plan. Uh, what's also in the plan is sort of, you know, like we tried with the Octave collection, a sort of family collection. You know, lots of different finishes as well, um, because that's what got us into it. That's what got, that's what gave us the idea. So uh, that's what we enjoy trying and experiencing. Uh, but yeah, in terms cool. of balls as well, it's something. We discussed doing small bottles always, like 50 CL. Um, but for Andy and I, like we're almost put off by that. So why would we why would we do something like that? We we all we always want a 70 CL bottle. So if you can have a good whiskey, you've got you've got it. You you don't want to I don't want to pay any more for the glass than I have to. I'd rather get my volumes worth. So I think we've discussed doing like Andy said, tasting sort of a box with you get both of them in it, but that'll be secondary always to the two 70 CL bottles that will people can buy together or separate. Because if, if also some people just want to have a certain type of finish and buy just one bottle as well. Like hmm. if you want to buy one bottle, you want to buy as much as you can. <laughs> just going back to what Andy was saying there about having one and having sort of like a family. Would that all be the same base spirit? So, like, say, you would take, for instance, the 11-year-old Ben Rennes, and you'd have the 11-year-old Ben Rennes, and then you'd have it finished in this octave, then that octave, then that octave, then. So you'd have maybe a family of five, but it's all the same base spirit, so as you got a... Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, I think, I think, that's, what, I think that's what we'd like to see. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the collection that we tried was the octave. It was an octave collection. It was all miniatures. I think what I would really like to release is a uh, full 70 CL bottles, you know, a collection. Um, but again, trying to aim it at a sort of price point that, you know, we don't, well, not, nothing nothing wrong with collecting, obviously, but our, our whole thing is we want people to try it. We want people to drink it um, because that's, that's, what we, that, that's what we do ourselves. I just yeah. think that in itself is a great tasting night. You have got one whiskey, but you're tasting yeah. you're tasting it in different finishes. That's just that that that's that's a night in itself. Yeah, I mean you can see the difference. The, the two we've already tried the difference between between the two pairs just in the influence of the wood is amazing. See, so you, you you know you can imagine what you would get when you've got the same spirit that you know finished in a rum cask, a sherry cask. Um, you know, a red wine cask. You can imagine the sort of difference in the influence it would have, and and the sort of different flavors you would get. 
Um, so no, it's definitely it's something that interests me, um, or interests both of us definitely. You mentioned the Rattrys wins. I've got a bottle of the Buna Haven that they it's pre the octaves, and I've, they gave me a sample of one of the ones that's in one of the octaves. I can't actually remember what octave it's in, but they, I think that went into three different octaves of Buna Haven. Um, and I'd love to try them all, but they're all long gone. So um, it sounds really interesting that that you think take a thing to me as well. Yeah. No. It's okay. uh, it's aye, it's what got us started in it really was it, our sort of interest in that. Has um, anyone got any other questions about that or about the brand or us before we move on to some crazy cask samples? On you go. Uh, just like from from when you first had the idea to to when you you released the first the first bottle, like how how long did that sort of process take, and um, how long did it take for you to sort of get motoring from from having the idea to to putting it into action? Uh, it was about so, so we we officially started in September twenty nineteen. Uh, we released about June. So uh, we start about eight, about eight, nine months or something like that. We were properly. I mean, we were ready to go before June, but um, the biggest thing for us was you've gone through the the sort of license in the HMRC process to get the license to hold the cask, to bottle the cask, um, to sell the alcohol. That that was the biggest thing that we went through. But I, it, it wasn't much of a turnaround time at all from buying our first cask to releasing our first bottle. Yeah, I think, I think that's quite impressive because you always kind of think these things take take a while, but um, it's quite quite interesting to hear. It's, it's quite a short time frame. No, yeah, no, it's it's about perseverance and also getting the right HMRC officer on yeah. your side as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the secret to it. If um, if anyone's interested in starting, I can definitely recommend an HMRC officer to. Give you the license. Second years have just popped up because he's a tax accountant. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, be, I'll be quiet then. <laughs> Bye. Um, I'll take his one. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess we'll move on to the first cash sample that we've got. Then the Glen Burgey. That's one I've been interested in. I have to say. Aye. Uh, so moving on to the the heavy stuff. Crazy how light this one is. Mad. Yeah, no, the color is almost. It almost looks like. Unique. <laughs> like, aye, 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 and I think it's nine years old. But it's nine years got, old. When we got this, you know, I sent I sent Brendan a picture. I'm like, Look at the color of that. It's it's almost like vodka. Somebody scammed you. I mean, for us now, uh, we um, see the light of the colour now. Like We almost get a, a bit excited because it's like you're going to get that distillery character, but it's it still had that maturation process. You it's still got the, the influence. So uh, there's definitely something about uh, refill casks that sort of excite us now, whereas before it'd be kind of like, oh, refill, unflavoured. Now nah, it's got that sort of... Uh, new make, I mean, new make's not exactly unflavorful. No. Yeah. But um, I mean, the reason why we so, so we sort of had the opportunity to purchase this uh, Glen Burgey, and the whole sort of reason was that Brendan and I and a couple of friends we took a trip up to Isla, visited the uh, Arnaho Distillery. I don't know if any of you have had the chance to go up there, but we sort of did a um, a cask sampling. A tour there which I'd recommend to anyone I think it was 50, 50 pounds a head or something um, down in the uh, tasting down in the warehouse you get to draw your own samples from the cask pour them out and then you get a like a 100 uh, 300 or 200 CL to take away with you your favourite your favourite cask and I think all yeah. of us that went, I think there was five of us that went and four out of five tried to take home this one here <laughs> uh, that we tried so oh well sorry the Glen Burgey that we tried that day 
Um, so it was a really interesting cask, and they saved it for last. And what they said to us was, so they this was one. I think it was twenty. Was it twenty three year old? Twenty two year old? Or? It was as Andy said. It was it was the last cask sample. So uh... <laughs> it was. Um, nah, it was. I think it, I've got a feeling it was twenty three. But uh, what was interesting about it was they said that this was a cask that they had. Um, forgot about so what it was was it was a it was a bourbon it was a, a matured on a bourbon cask originally and at some point someone had transferred it to a, a sherry cask uh, which was meant for a finish and it was meant to be bottled and yeah when um Arnaho was like owned by hunter lang yeah and- yeah sorry aye aye sorry owned by uh, owned by hunter lang yeah so um yeah, own spirit hmm it was like Hunter Lang Spirit, wasn't it? Uh, Ardenhall. Oh yeah, sorry. I so it was a, uh, I it was it was a spirit, and uh, they transferred it over to a sherry cask, and then uh, it was meant to be bottled, but it was forgot about. Um, and then at some point they thought, "Oh, what's this line here?" And they, I can't remember what they said. They transferred it back into a bourbon cask, so it was bourbon sherry bourbon, um, but it was basically a mistake. It was a mistake cask, and. Somewhere along the line as well, they speculated that it had been in a peat, an ex-peated cask or an ex-peated bourbon cask or, or something because when we tried it, the flavour was it was like, it was insane. And, uh, you know, we'd never tried a, a Glen Burgey before that, but all of us were like, wow, you know, uh, really impressed with it. So when we saw this Glen Burgey, we are like, great, we'll get it and we'll try and recreate this, this um, dram that we had tasted in Isla. Uh, so, yeah, we we sort of got that cask and uh, drew a sample from it straight away, and then just instantly see the colour of it. <laughs> it was clear, um, <laughs> even at nine years old, which is uh, totally different to what we had over there. But yeah, so this this one in particular is a refill bourbon, and as I said, we've drawn it straight from the cask, so sitting at like fifty eight point six uh, ABV. But you notice on the nose, like how just the cereal notes you get, and the, it is almost like that new make that comes through. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting from it. I find it quite, um, like, quite confusing. G- given yeah. All of it, I'm expecting to taste like those really exotic fruits, like bananas and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm not because the age of it. So, you no, know, it's kind of like you ever tried like a really nice sipping tequila, a really really nice one. I don't know if it's just the color again. It's like yeah, suggestion that's making me. Um, but it's one of it's one of those ones. Though it's on the on the nose. It's it's almost it's uh, you get enough of that new make to to draw your interest in. It's it's almost it's got something that you I don't know. You just want to find out more about it. And that's the first thing I said to Brendan. When we got the sample. It was like I looked at the color of it, and I'm thinking that's. That's not ready. Like that's look at the colour of that. And then you, you smell it and you're like, well, there is actually something to that. Um a lot more interesting. It's a bit like some Pacino we're having on uh, uh, Patrick's night. A little bit of uh, that to it. Yeah, exactly. It's that a proper base you make. Yeah. Hmm. A rough Keaton, I, to it. Yeah. Keaton, uh, I I second what you're saying about the tequila. Definitely tequila on the rose. That, uh, as you're saying, a really nice sip in tequila. Like uh, Don Julio 42, that sort of thing. That, that's the nice least. tequila I've ever tried, and that's exactly what I relate it to. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like it's like oat cakes and sort of white, it's almost like white grapes, that kind of sweetness that I get on, on, on the palate, anyway. So is the colour thing, the fact it's so clear, due to the fact it's a refill barrel, therefore? A lot of the colour's been taken out of it already, so you're just getting the new makes put in, and it's just not having so much of an influence on the colour on it then. Exactly, aye. So, as Brendan said, it's sort of seventy percent of the flavour comes through the wood, but a hundred percent of the colour um, comes from the wood. So we've got. Th- th- I think that's what what we like about the refill. Yeah, I love a, I love a bourbon a bourbon matured as well, but with a refill, you get a lot more of the distillery. Um, you make spirit coming through and you can actually taste the difference between, you know, you've not got as much influence from the cask. That must be a third, third fill cask. Yeah. 
know. Yeah. So light for nine years. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's the, the lightest I've seen whiskey in a long, long time. Yeah. Mm. But, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's interesting. It's an interesting distillery. It's not. Mm. It's not so widely known. You got a lot of independents bottling it, but it's again, mostly Valentine's, yeah. Yeah, Valentine's mostly. Um, again, okay. so single malt made for blends. But I think, I think they've got one. I think they've only ever had one single malt release. I think it, the same as the Ben Rennes. I think it was a fifteen-year-old. Uh, I've never tried it, but it's it's definitely an interesting single malt for me. Yeah, a lot of really, really something different. Really cool. Yeah. A lot of crushed oats and molasses on the note on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Andy's probably just got a wee moonshine still in his back bedroom. He's uh, nothing to do with the fact I'm from Kilmarnock, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's no Glenn Kelly, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> Here's actually something about the, the Ayrshire Whiskey Group in general. With me and Manson have been doing it for like six months now. See, whiskey in Kilmarnock, it's a really fucking sensitive subject. Like, <laughs> the, 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 the Diageo roots are very I know. deep, and anything whiskey related, people generally from Kelly like get their back up and they're like, We don't really want to. So, so I, when we started the group, I started posting on random groups throughout like wee towns in the area, and then I put one on the Kilmarnock, just <laughs> find some random Kilmarnock page, and the amount of abuse I got, <laughs> just, just for having a whiskey page. Uh, I, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it personally. It's probably, it's probably one of the busiest posts that we've ever posted. <laughs> it's all like absolute chaos. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> it's meant for like all these other places. We'll just be like, you're pride of Scotland. Like, you know, talking about whiskey, from, like, they'll be proud of it. And Kilmarnock, you're just getting hate mail sent to you. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, it's, it's interesting. One, one of my earliest like memories is going to. Because we were all. When Diageo shut down the original, because it was the original Johnny Walker distillery, when they shut that down, I remember the I remember going to the protests. Um, you know, I was I was just a wee boy, no, no idea, no no clue about whiskey, but everyone in Kilmarnock, I think, and everyone in the, you know, their mum had turned out for the protest to to um, cut up the signs for Diageo shutting it down. But it's. Uh, the thing is, I know a lot, there's a lot of folk that I know that used to work in the distillery. It was obviously a big employer in the town. And a lot of them are sitting in their, their sort of share schemes that they had in Diageo at the time, which have obviously rocketed up and they've got a great life. So I don't know what they're complaining about now. But <laughs> I, I, I worked at uh, Diageo uh, Johnny Walker when I was uh, 18. And it was, it was, fuck, it was great. I was at college. Aye. I was at college Monday, Monday, Monday to Wednesday, and then I worked. It was uh, twelve hour shifts over the weekend, so it was Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven till seven. I was eighteen Aye. years old. I was earning ten fifty an hour. Uh, every month, every month you worked, you get thirty quid to spend in the shop. So there was a shop, there was a shop on on site, which gave you, which was was ridiculously cheap. You think of it, think of a bottle of see like Shirot, Shirot vodka. Mm. Shirot vodka is probably what 40 50 quid a bottle now. I was getting it, I was getting it out of that fucking shop for 25 quid. Yeah, which when, when you're 18 is uh, a no brainer. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Drank for uh, all my mates, but like, I uh, see every time we're going up to football, I'd be going into the shop getting bottles of vodka. You come up with two bottles of vodka sitting out the train up to the football, it was great. <laughs> um, as you're saying, like. See the, the share scheme and all that sort of stuff. Like uh, as soon as I left, I, I get rid of all my shares and he got and I was only there for I was there for eight months. Aye. It was like a case of the share scheme was great. Aye. He, he didn't do it, we just keep giving these shares. No, I know, I know, I know folk that took the well obviously when they shut down they got the redundancy package and the it was enough for them to retire early and they were living off their, their share scheme and you know it's it was Aye, they were a great employer for the town, but it was a shame. Yeah, as you was in Edrington's permanent card, and they, they look after their employees, though. It's a, mm. They do, they look after them. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I was, I was just in the ball and hall. I was 18 years old, and it was like, can, can you 
can you find a better job at 18 year old at 10 for 10 50 an hour putting, fu- putting fucking bottles in a box <laughs> honestly it was bo- putting bottles in a box and then there was uh one of the jobs was making sure the labels were on straight but about two meters up was the, there was a machine which was doing the exact same job you were just making sure that you were just making sure the machine so for every for every hour you were picking 10 random bottles off the line just to make sure that the fucking it was the right label, it was on straight, all that sort of stuff. For, any, for anyone that knows anyone that works for a big drinks company, the guy that picks out the labels that are squinty is a hero because he's the guy that can do <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we had a We had a woman who worked with us, right? But in fact, there was two, and uh, <clears throat> one was an alcoholic. Uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't sack her because she came forward and said she was out. They couldn't sack her. So there was a there was a day where it was and it was the Johnny Black, it was the uh, one of the filters and the ball had snapped. And there must have been there must have been a hundred there must have been a hundred litres of Johnny Walker Black on the fucking bond floor. And you see this woman, she's fucking loving it. <laughs> I was going, yeah. we, all, we, all, we all try to we all try to mop up this jo- this Johnny Walker Black and this woman she she get pulled out to this she get pulled outside you need to go and you need to go up to the fucking refectory and sit down you can't be in here <laughs> hey. and it was like and it got to a point see after like five ten minutes I sitting there mopping up this whiskey they're thinking fuck me I'm I'm pushed <laughs> because it's all this fumes all this whiskey. So they, they got to a point where they had to go and had to go and sit us down for forty five minutes upstairs just to kind of so we can have okay ourselves. And then there was, another, there was another woman, right? She kept suing, she kept suing the agile, she, she sued, sued the agile three or four times due to manual handling. And it was the same fucking course. So every time she tried to sue, she every time she tried to sue um, the agile for manual handling, we had to go through a manual handling course. And it was always the same. And it's like the same shit. It's sitting in the exact same course. And oh, uh, so I, but as you're saying, so many folk milked that place for what it was worth. And right. um, but it's not until the the co- it was knocked down, the college was built on it. How you realise how big that site was? That site was massive. Yeah, no, it was it was huge. I think it was. It was it not one of the biggest producing? Plants, mm. I, I, I can't mind, but um, I it's it was, now, it I mean, now, now, now I know why I was at the, all those protests and why everyone didn't want it to shut down because it sounds like a great place to work. <laughs> so, there was, there was, um, so there was, um, so there was 15 lines and there was 15 lines for bottling. And uh, I remember there was one time that I, it was you're in there, it was coming up to Christmas, and you get and you always, I was always in the, I was always in the Johnny Blue. Uh, mm-hmm. I was always a Johnny Blue line. It was not, and it was, it was um, 13, 14, uh, 13, 14, and 15. And there was like, oh, can you go to 22? I'm at, like, who is 22? And, it's, and it was, uh, oh, we'll, we'll take you down. And it was up, it was up the back, and it was like um, secured entrance, fucking security guards out the, out the front of it. And it's where they put all the Swarovski diamonds, Swarovski crystals in the bottles. All oh, right. Aye. And to think, and to think, in Hill Street and Kamala putting fucking <laughs> Swarovski, Swarovski crystals and Swarovski diamonds in the fucking bottles and, and Hill Street and Kamala it's great <laughs> yeah, you would never guess it <laughs> and Diageo is still only the worst employee on Hill Street and Kamala hey Kieran <laughs> ah, Kieran's yeah. away <laughs> he's messed up man. how many bottles were the spitting out Fraser on the line was it like oh it was it was ridiculous like, to say like you think Johnny Walker Blue is the rarest, the rarest malts, and there was we were all you said, for, for those for those seven hours they're spitting out bottles for seven hours, or sorry twelve hours, or spitting out twelve bottles for continuous. There was I always remember the worst one was swing, because um, when you you sat the bottle of swing down, uh, swings decide uh, design so that it's for rocking in a ship. So the bottle actually the, the bottle actually swings. So he sat this bottle down, and you think it's going to fall, then it catches itself in the fucking on the bottom. Aye, 
No, it's, it sounds like it sounds like a great place they want. <laughs> well, that was that was how me and Kieran actually worked with me. We worked at the same company in Hill Street in Vermont. After long after the Azure was going out of the old council buildings. Um yeah. So that's how me and Kieran actually met. What 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 one was it in Hill Street? But it's now it's Microtech. Um it's where the oh, right. uh, Scottish Enterprise. Aye, aye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know, I know we are. But, um, so that was, where, that, that was how me and Ian actually met. And the fact that we were like, like three miles away from each other. But, um, yeah. That's a lot more great. fruity with a little bit of water, that one. Was this a. Uh, I completely forget what one we're on. Hi <laughs> <Aye>, there. <laughs> Burgi. Glenn Burgi, there we go. That's the one. <laughs> Um, it's a lot more fruity with a bit of water. Aye, no, no, it is. It's uh, it's definitely an interesting one. So, I, I mean, Brendan, do you want to talk a little bit about the finish that we've got? Obviously, this this is one that we've got that's upcoming. It's unreleased yet, so um, we've got a finish sort of planned for this. So this one, um, it, it's a bit annoying to talk about because it, it sounds exciting. Uh, but so the wee brother, we we love it as it is because it's like vibrant. You've really got that sort of distillery character there. Um, loads of flavors going on. I think it's just a, it's a great dram. Um, it, pretty strong at fifty eight point six percent. However, like Andy said, like we want to recreate the dram that we tried in Isla. So um, I think was it? It was just last week actually. We managed to we've secured a cask to finish the half liquid in to create that, recreate that uh, whiskey that we tried. And that'll be, when are we, what, is it like next uh, summer we're going to release this one, Paxton, hey, Andy? Uh, yeah, I like that, yeah. So, so last week we managed to take half a liquid from the whiskey you've just tried and we've put it into a X, Isla Pinot Noir quarter cask. So you're going to get that sort of subtle peatiness from the oak that's been from an old peated uh, whiskey that's had uh, Pinot Noir uh, wine in it. So you're going to get that red wine influence, the peat influence, and hopefully we're going to recreate that exact same dram that we tried in Isla five drams deep that, <laughs> that tasted amazing at the time. That's, um, a, that's a very unusual finish to have heard to hear of. Yeah, like we're we're really like we're this one's this one's we're really excited about. So I mean, uh, keep your eye on it, and uh, you know if we do another tasting again sometime soon, you can maybe see a halfway through example of that. But like I said, last week it just went into that cask, so we're we're really ex- we we were um, we bought that cask recently to do that and to put it into some sort of red wine sherry some sort of fruit wine with a peat influence into it and then when we've seen the opportunity to get this uh pinot noir peated cask we're like perfect and we just jumped on it and that's what's uh that's what's going to do it so hopefully next summer we'll have those bottles ready but maybe get a wee halfway point and see what it's like we'll, we'll, we'll draw a sample if we draw a big one then we get some samples out feel free to put it in the page i'm sure everybody would be yeah yeah. Yeah. Would that be by chance from the most northerly Isle distillery? Well, we don't uh, we don't know exactly where it's come from, but um because 2019 they did one which was Pinot Noir. Yeah, yeah. There's actually another one I thought it was, but we we I had we, did, f- we did we did talk about that. So I remember we were wondering yeah, if it was. Didn't tell us exactly what one. We know that our beg did uh um did their black mm. quite recently, um, but we don't know what stage distilleries do things at. If it's already in glass, like it almost it, doesn't matter what you do. Like any independent bottler does anything, at Isla. Everybody's like, it's a Kalila. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Well, we're thinking, uh, will the Azure get Pinot Noir casks? Don't know, maybe not, because they have got their own fact. Probably it's most likely not Kalila because uh, I think they've got their own cooperage, 
Whereas this is not from a Diageo Cooperage, this is from an independent. So, what Isla whiskey? No idea. Um, but I think we're we're excited to try it. We're really excited to see how it goes. Scan the barcode on the cask and see what happens. <laughs> I will try that one. We'll, we'll forward it on to you what we get, right? <laughs> hey, you're, you, it's amazing when that, the information you can get off a cask barcode. It really is. I wonder. Oh, well, ours has been uh, it's been modified slightly, so it's not the original. But um, again, it'll be a bit smaller cast. We we'll get loads of that influence. Uh, but we're, we're looking forward to it. What do you guys think of uh, the Glen Burgie as is? Like, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a refill. But what what do you think? Does that give you like lots of flavour? Do you like it? What's your think? What's your thoughts? I like it. I'm not a peaty person, but I do quite like that. Yeah, it's. It, I think it, it, it's still got a lot of new makes character to it, um, which which I love. But I don't know the whiskey drinkers are going to like that. It's a little bit like the Stoisha that uh, Ben Harbin are doing, but yeah. the really young stuff. No, I was it's going to say color. it reminds me of the Cahoman in its early days. Mm-hmm. It would have been really vibrant and new make spirit. There was a, little, a huge amount of influence in that three and four year old stuff so yeah I would, I would say I would say certainly yeah the wee brother similar to what you're saying about the new make spirit but fantastic in the nose and it is actually very very nice but the big brother is probably the one for me tonight it's just ticks all the boxes the rest have been very very nice but that ticks all the boxes and when I nosed them all earlier on before we started that was the one that stood out for me it's, it's exceptional it's very very nice Oh, sorry. The, we've not actually moved on to the the Big Brother yet. That's a different whiskey. Yep. That's a that's a, a different one. But the the Glen Burgie will go into a peated cask. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be it will be like quite different. Um, what, what do people think of uh, unpeated whiskeys going into a peated cask? Is that something that people have tried? Like, what do you think? I don't know. Um, from my experience, it's always like it can be hit or miss. Like it can be, it can be really good, but not always. Um, but like, um, what's the one? Um, hey, what's it called? The can't that the very most northern mainland distillery. I'm trying to remember its name. Wolfburn. Wolfburn. Wolfburn does a, like some repeated cask. Yeah, Morgan. Yeah, that's the one I'm trying to think of. Couldn't remember its name. Do you like that that's one? A, that's a really good one for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I remember trying it like last year, uh, tasting and like you wouldn't have thought it was just from cask. You saw you would have thought it's just a lightly peated malt whiskey. Yeah, so it's a really it's like a touch of peat. It's not really like uh, it's not the like. Almost the foundations of the drum. Hmm. Yeah. But um, I talking about peated ones. We'll uh, we'll move on to our last one of the night, which is one that we are we are both excited to try as well. Uh, when we got so again, it's another cast sample. We drew the sample out for this, and when we you know divided it up into the the bottles that we sent out tonight, we only had a little tiny bit of of it to try ourselves. So this is almost like us trying it properly um, in a full dram um, as well uh, just now. So I, Brendan, you'll take us through that. Yeah, so we got the opportunity to buy a Lechaig cask. Uh, it looks like Lechaig, but it's... Um... It's, it's distilled at Tobermory Distillery. So it's basically a, just a peated Tobermory. Used to be quite a, a heavy peated uh, whiskey, but over time it's sort of like been less and less peated, but like on the lighter on the peat side. So we had the opportunity to buy the Lechaig and we wanted a, we kind of wanted a Christmas drama again. So this is like planning ahead. I think it was, must be last summer we managed to buy this cask. And we wanted to have this heavy, smoky dram. Um, 
for Christmas, but like wanted that sweetness, that Christmas spice to have there as well. Um, so that's why I bought this cask, and uh, this is a big <coughs> of this. This is like this is a work in progress. Again, another cask sample. Um, so cask strength, no water added, just as is. Planning to bottle maybe maybe a couple months before Christmas. So this is it's not a final product, but it's like a wee insight to see how the whiskey will mature in time. So it's a Mull, Mull whiskey. So it's one of the island distilleries, the only uh, distillery on Mull. I mean, look at the color of it. Like, Why is it pink? It's Ribena. Yeah, yeah, yeah so this, is, uh, this is the big brother. So this is uh, the wee brother has been matured in a bourbon hogshead again, whereas the big brother has been put into a port quarter cask. So this is from October. So October, this went into a quarter cask that was previously used for port, and that's why it's got that mad colour there. Yeah, it's like it's like rose gold sort of colour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and and we drew we drew this in about what was it February? We drew this and pulled out the samples. So, um, about four months, four or five months. Um, this that and that's the colour it's it's you know got from the the cask in four months. Uh, it's very the uh, the original cask is very blonde sort of color, very straw color. So right away, like I mean, what did you say, sir? Sorry, rose gold was it, Kieran? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, exactly, rose gold. Pinky, I mean, pinky goldish, yeah, yeah, it's like rose gold. I, mean, I, I was I said Ribena, but <laughs> <laughs> we won't put we won't put that on the market. But yeah, it's it's a nice it's a ni- it's nice in the nose. You know, you're getting that sort of for me, we were actually tasting this earlier, as Andy said, like we've not tried this one too often because we drew this sample just for this tasting. And it was for some reason only just enough to get all you guys a sample, plus a wee bit for us to try. Um so I was actually pouring a wee bit out earlier and we we're trying to like go through the tasting notes. So be interesting to see what you guys get as we go through. But for me, like right off the nose, I'm getting maple smoked bacon. You're getting the sweetness, the peat from the, the the distillery and the almost the sort of meaty flavour and you're getting sort of berries the, the port is totally coming through and then on the, on the palate you know you're getting that peaty like earthy sweet fruit toffee it's, it's all coming through on the palate and then the sort of finish, this is something that me and, I, <laughs> me and Andy spoke about a few times, is there's almost like a, a smoked cheese fruity flavour to it at the end. It's really that sort of earthy, deep flavour, but sweet, smoked. It's, yeah. uh, it's a big heavy dram, you know, it's 56.5%. You're really getting all that flavour in the alcohol. And for like a work in progress, like a few more months in that cast, we're really excited to see what it'll turn out like. Uh, actually, um, I don't know who's managed to taste the inaugural Rassi release, which is actually pretty close to the other one. Um, it's very, very close. Like it, it feels much more mature than the rounded product, where the Rassi one's quite um, not that. Um, uh, it really feels like very like the, the inaugural Rassi stuff. Well, you've got to say, you tried that? Yeah, I've got a couple of balls. If you want a wee sample of that, I'll give you some. I hold that. Definitely. You've got a couple, so <laughs> none of the rest of us can have any. We can't get any now anymore. <laughs> That's a bad I was going to say, trying the, um, there was a Rassi tasting that was done for a group I was in, and it had like a cast sample, so it wasn't whiskey yet, it was only like 30 to 34 months or something like that. Um, they're all like around that age, but the peated red wine sample that's I'm going to see a similar thing to it. It's um, it tastes like this tastes like what that peated red wine cast sample wants to be. Same taste and I know exactly, like me and Andy both done the same taste, and I know exactly you're talking about. You're getting that, um, that red sort of the the, the fruit wine sort of influence, and yeah. talking uh, what David's saying as well, like the pepperiness that comes from the. I'm sure you tasted the Woodward Wood Woodward uh, the Woodford Reserve casks. Exactly. The rally, yeah, rally. those are the best ones for me. 
the Woodford Reserve Rye Cast were the best in that lineup of drams. That pepperiness that adds the whiskey, like this is, it's got the peppery, sweet. Aye. Yeah. What's has anyone got any taste and notes apart from like 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 we say we've literally just tried this a few times. I've got a bit of dark chocolate in the palate. Aye, no, there's de- there's definitely a sort of sweetness that. I say, uh, I mean that that's kind of why I, I to me it's like smoked cheese. It's like because uh, you've obviously got the smoke, the kind of peat hitting you, and you've also got a kind of creamy sweetness. Mm-hmm. I think anyway. <laughs> Uh, but it's no, it's an interesting one, and for only four, about four or five months, um, finish it's it's given a lot, uh, you know, to the the Lecheg that we have tried, uh, which is the bourbon barrel. But I no, we're really excited to see how much yeah. more we can get from this cask in the next couple of months, you know, the next few months. I. I... I done a taste in my Mossburn and Torre Vague distillers. Yeah, yep. fortunate enough to get a bottle of Torre Vague and try it. Lucky man. It's very similar in what? the sense that uh, Torre Vague kind of brand their peated content is like a well tempered peat, which I think they're kind of putting their own mark on a sort of the branding is that, but it's sort of like a mellow peat. It's not too overwhelming. It's quite subtle, and that was kind of my first impression. The Torre Vague, it was quite, it's peaty, but a lot of youthful notes coming through it as well. Mm-hmm. And the fact that this is like 11 year old, it's quite a mellow tempered peat, but I, I get quite youthful, like fruity notes from it more than, like I, I, I probably wouldn't ever guess it was 11 year old, to be honest with you. And mm-hmm. I said it was much younger. I, I think much fruitier. I, again, I, I... Again, that's maybe sort of an issue with us buying semi blind. Is like the 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 bourbon cast we might have bought maybe a a refill, and that's why you're maybe getting that sort of creamy um, notes, and like that's why Andy and I are getting that sort of creamy cheese smoke. Mm-hmm. Or um, just because it's a refill, you know, it's taken some of that out of it already. Yeah, I think like Torre Vague have went with this tagline of well tempered peat. It's nothing to do with the peat itself. It's like their own way of saying subtle, mellow. And I think this sort of hits that. That's like exactly the same. It's, in my opinion, that's a kind of perfect way to describe it, actually, as well. It's quite, it's quite interesting to like, hear that the Torre Vague, uh, Rassi, um, and Le like, like Vague, or, like, I mean, they're not a mile and miles away from each other either. Which is so, really funny, because I, I don't like the Rassi inaugural release. I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't think it's great. I, the, uh, I, I did the Rassi tasting, as Brendan said, which was a lot of different sample casts, really young casts that we tried, and it was good, but I was just really disappointed with the, the first release. No, I, I, was really disappointed I, I know it's not an age I, statement. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I, I, I like the Rassi one just as much as I do this one. I'm much more of the this one, but it's still, I, I just feel there's hints of the Rassi and this one the colour the, um, the the smokiness the everything in it and I think that's almost what Rassi will become if it was an 11 year old definitely mate I totally agree with the colour and the full drama in itself I think it's what yeah. Rassi might become aye yes I think that's what I'm try, trying to say I totally agree with that aye no really yeah I mean for us it's exciting to taste this because it's a uh, Hopefully the same for you guys. Like it is a work in progress. You know, in a few months' time, it'll take on more of that port sweetness and the tannins from the woods. Like it's going to be exciting. I think. I think it's going to be a really good winter, a winter warmer. You know, it benefits from a little bit of water because it it takes that just that edge right off the top edge, but then it rounds out all the flavors. The flavors are really really rounded. Just having a little bit of a swig of water before you take some. Even I'm, so glad, I'm so glad you're here because I never add water, but every time somebody mentions it, I go, oh shit, yeah, I need to put some water in. <laughs> no, but it's not putting water in the whiskey, it's putting water in your mouth, see? That's yeah. the big difference. You put the water in your mouth and then you have a little bit of uh, moisture in it and it just ch- just takes that edge just right off it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because it's always something that I've... Uh... 
been cautious of doing because as soon as you add too much water... That's like, it, it's spoiled. So I always, I always have a glass and just try it that way. You know, swig it in, swig it about, and then try the whiskey afterwards. And it's amazing the difference it makes. So what's, uh, what's the thoughts on that one, guy? Like, looking forward to... Is it good as is? Looking forward to a few months' time? I'll, I'll be buying a bottle of that, I think. I would um, I'd buy a bottle now and the thought yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I'll be I buying think it right we, now. we want to go much past another couple of months on that. Especially yeah, sure. if that's in a quarter cask now, it's going to get to the overpowering stage very shortly. I'm curious to what you're looking for for it to become like what made you go like okay at this point we don't think it's ready what are you looking for to come from it i think um for us in the past it's it's kind of been like a timeline we go like at this point we think it's gonna be good try it and that's nine times out of ten well so far we've got it right um but if we're sort of comparing to like the Glen Cardin, where we were trying it quite often, you know, when you try it, you, you, like me and Andy are just like, yeah, that's it, that's it. So that's just part of the beauty, I guess, of the whiskey is like, you, you don't know, like, weather, temperature has so much influence. Like, yeah. there's a, especially during the winter, there's not as much sort of, it's colder, so there's not as much sort of evaporation. So in summer, like, It'd be great to try this again at the end of summer and see what happens and you'll know, you know what I mean? Like we'll try it and we'll see like that's it or that's not it. And hopefully hopefully it turns out well. I'm sure it will. It's, it tastes great as is, but um, we're excited yeah. to see how much more port influence we can get from it. I would say definitely just now the Leger is ready for bottling. It reminds me of a very good Coila. Mm. It's just the right level of peat, the right level of lightness. It's got everything that it should have going for it. Might get better over the next maybe six months, a year, whatever. But in my opinion, if you bought it right now, you couldn't lose. Yeah. You wouldn't Keith, get a bad review if you'd done it right now. Keith, did you oh, get that? Uh, uh, did I give you the first... When I gave you the samples, I think, did I give you a Big Brother Kalila one? You did, and I stupidly went and bought one earlier on at an inflated price because it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know, because that when you said that there, it reminds you of Kalila, I was like, a Pia... A, Big Brother Kalila was, um, I that 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 was probably the best that we've bought so far. To be, to be blunt, it's, it's oh, really, I mean, we we won. I think we, we got bronze. It was a bit, it was our first release, and we got bronze at the Independent Bottlers Challenge World Whiskey Awards, twenty twenty. So mm-hmm. it was, it, uh, some some of the whiskies it was up against. We were, uh, I mean, we were over the moon with the results, but it. Aye, that that's been a highly sought after one is the the big brother. Um, to be fair, Kayla is a different league for a Kayla yeah. Sherry is something different again. That yeah. sample you gave me it was just like, holy fuck, what what am I drinking here? This is amazing. It was just totally different from the normal bourbon filled standard Kaylas that you'll taste, even the cash strengths. The sherry just kicked it over the edge from really good to exceptional. That's it. That's the- that drum is a perfect example of uh, of like not knowing when, because like we planned to bottle that a lot earlier than we did, mm-hmm. and because of the pandemic, the warehouse was shut, so everyone got pushed back by was six weeks or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, we we actually sent a sample to a reviewer, and they were like, mm, "It's okay." And then six weeks later, we actually managed to release the bottle, and they were like, "Night and day, like perfect." So. <sighs> Again, part of the beauty of whiskey, it's like you, you never know when's the right time and you just hope you get it right. Well, that, that's another thing is, do you think some indie bottlers just try too hard? Like, are they just putting too much effort into it? I, I, don't, I don't know if they try too hard, but I think what the, the common trend we seem to... The, the casks that you continually see uh, from independent bottles are casks that we see up see come up again and again. It's... It's the easy cast. It's a cast that there's loads of that. Mm-hmm. There's loads of them out there. You know they're not sitting back on and waiting for the right thing to bottle. They're like they're all about volumes. Let's buy as much as we can. Let's bottle as much as we can. And I think uh, that's that's where we tried to sort of 
tame ourselves back. Um, and it's not so much a it's not so much a funding issue. It's more of a it's more of a we don't we want to release stuff that we would only drink ourselves. That's that's our sort of view on it. I was literally about to say the exact same thing. Basically, like, almost like they don't some don't try hard enough. Like don't take the risk. Mm. Yeah. How often? How often do you guys sample a cask that you've stored? Is this like a monthly thing and a bi-monthly, or do you do it sometimes week by week, or to check what it's like tasting like for that time? You said nine weeks and made that night and day. So how do you know yeah. when to go and get a wee sample? It, I mean, it varies. Uh, we tend to check them up every couple of months. Um, but as soon as we buy a cask, we'll draw a sample straight away because that's that's where we decide. That's where we taste it and we decide, right, how long has this got to go before we think it's ready to bottle? What what will that be in what will that be interesting if we or if we mature it and or finish it in something else, what will make that interesting? So we draw a sample as soon as we buy a cask. In terms of the finish, we sort of judge it on a case by case basis. As Brendan said, the heavy char virgin octave that we had for our Glen Cadden Big Brother tonight it's very volatile so you know we've got we've got a sort of good network built up with an industry that um, in fact it was someone that we know that works with Chivas uh, that's a blender over there that was telling us that you need to watch what you're doing with virgin uh, oak casks um, it can really sort of influence the flavour uh, really quickly, it's easy to overcook, so we sort of try that one every month. Uh, other ones, but it's a sherry. We, it's more, it's more, it's more tested. You kind of know exactly what you're gonna get in a couple of months. We leave that a wee bit longer. Um, it really depends on a case by case basis. If we're trying something that's a wee bit more experimental, obviously we want to check up on it more. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it is really, you know, I, I would say every three months. Every three to six months, we'll check up on a on a cask, and it also depends on the you know the size of the cask that we're finishing it in as well. Um, but it's that that's a thing with a smaller cask, you take on a lot more flavour, but it's a lot it's a lot easier to lose than you make or, or sort of overcook it, is what we call it. It's you know, but yeah. Um, but I, I'm gonna anyway, Bryn. I'll I'll pass over to you. I'm gonna nap off the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Just where I was there. I. Um, is anyone got any questions about the Lachey at all? Or uh, can I just check, Brendan? When did you say that will go on sale again? So we're planning for I think summer next. Um, sorry, Lachey. Uh, there'll be Christmas time. A sort of Christmas winter release. Right. It's it's quite stunning. Um, when I saw the the Lechegg on the label, I thought, "Oh my god!" Uh, the bottle of Lechegg from Cardenheads, a fourteen year old, about five years ago, yeah. and it tasted like the kind of stuff you clean operating theatres with. It was vile. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, I, really nice. I, I got a wee sample of a uh, Gantry's today, a and um, it was fantastic. It was a um, I don't know whether it's been the the fact it's been a you know a you know a kind of finished cask, but it, it's just taken the edge off it. It's lovely. Yeah, like it's sweet. Sweet and peat goes hand in hand. It's mm. uh, it's great. And the, when we tried the the wee brother cask that we're going to be bottling soon as well, like it's we knew we we're on for a winner with that one and the. Uh, yeah, the, the sweetness and the peat just is it's just a perfect marriage. Mm. Um, it, it, the, the idea now is just to try and get the right timing. Um, it's it's almost there. We think in a couple months it'll be quite it'll be there. But for Christmas, it's going to be a Christmas dram, and like don't like don't the, the wee brother as well is just a really really great sort of you getting all that sort of cereal notes from the 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 chig as well and the peat is much stronger and it's a great dram as well much more sort of um 
savoury sort of dram. Really yeah. great if you're not a sweet tooth sort of guy. So how many bottles will you have, do you think? Um, so it'll, it'll, be, it'll be close to the 150, sort of, 100, over 100. It, it depends what sort of, that's something we need to discuss as well as like sort of what um, ABV we put it to. Um, we don't, we try not to like choose the ABV on how many bottles we want rather than we choose ABV on how it tastes. Um, so that'll depend on everything exact. And like, again, the the angel share. So how much it evaporates, the, the smaller the cask, unfortunately, you, you lose more to the angel share. So um, the message here is don't hang about. Uh, when it's released, <laughs> it's, it's um, yeah, it's and, really, uh, look out for your, your Bleeding club, Angels club and give us the heads up when any of this stuff's going out there. Because, uh, I mean, we've, we've got a we've got a mailing list on our website. Like, if you join that, like, we always give the mailing list like first steps and everything. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we, we always try and keep some bottles back that don't sell even to retailers or that. so that'll be the best opportunity to get it and but Christmas time is where we're aiming to have it out for um, yeah definitely another thing worth noting which for like us as a, a whiskey group club we're doing tastings well everybody that's on the call like the, the quality of the packaging and the, the branding and how easy it is for everyone to get their hands in the bottles really is really really important for us particularly for me and David Manson so for you guys to put that up on your website to get some bomb-proof packaging delivered to the house with the with the drams, mate. It was it was fantastic, and that means a lot to us. And it, it really takes a lot of stress off of mine and Davy's hands. For I mean, we're we're dealing with, and we are meaning some of the Isla big boys and some huge brands. And they're like, we'll send you a box of a couple of hundred whiskeys. Do it yourself. And like, yeah. right, okay, thanks, great, cheers. So for you guys to deal with that stuff and. How you're going about conducting the, the tasting sessions and for getting the, the drams out to everybody it's made our, our lives really easy so we appreciate that and thank you for that as well it's no not at all i mean hopefully i mean going forward like we'll we've got like a few things coming our, our next bottle in uh, like keep an eye out like we're going through some changes like things are going to look very different um we're like so trying to take our sort of brand into the next level um so yeah there's a few things coming this year, definitely. And like the Chig is like a big insight to one of the ones that's coming this year. Awesome. Um, Aye, no, it's a, it's a great group. Like, as I say, coming from Ayrshire ourselves, we were, well, me, me coming from Ayrshire, I was very interested, uh, you know, being in the group uh, for a wee while. So, no, it's good. And we'll obviously give the heads up whenever anything's coming out. And if any of you guys are interested in the balls, just give us a message and, yeah, we'll see what we can do. I think you've definitely won some fans today. Yeah, <laughs> some of us have been fantastic. Yeah, a, Any standouts for anyone or any favourites? Uh, the last one or two would be great. <laughs> Big brother, Glen Cardam. Great. Big brother, Glen Cardam. The Big brother, Ben Rennes. Aye. Yeah. yeah, that's number two for me. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm big brother Glenn Cadam and Ben Rennes the first one. It's really really interesting. I, I love I love the fact that the ethos behind it. This is the naked. This is this is altered. I, I really like that idea. Mm. Oh, thanks very much. As I say, like we've got. I mean, obviously, a Kalila and Ben Rennes. They're now sold out. Um, but we've got we've got the Glen Cadam, we've got I think five bottles, four bottles maybe left on the website. Uh but you know, something we do at the end of every tasting we do is we, we sort of give a you know a, a discount code. So we'll give you guys a discount code. I'll type it in the chat just now. Uh Ayrshire Whiskey ten, obviously ten percent off anything that you guys want to order on. We've made that valid for a year. Obviously we've not got much in stock at the moment. Uh, because we're sold out, but anything that's coming out in the future, you know, it's valid for a year. So, yeah. really appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's well. that's a very generous because normally yeah. it's the case that you just get a week or ten days for something. So, 
No, uh, you know, we don't have the stall levels there. We've got, I think we've got four, four of the wee brother gun card and that's it. So, um, I any of the upcoming releases within the next year. I'll post it on the Facebook as well. I'm using the like guy over waiting on this one for Christmas and then using the discount. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Aye, we'll be, we'll be waiting for December and we'll see a lot of uh, 10% offs. <laughs> 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 it's it's uh, I'd 10% do the price at every bottle. <laughs> 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 Uh, I I hope this is the first of many future tastings as well and the main man have been talking about what this group's going to look like in the future we've come out of lockdown kind of don't really know we want to do our our, uh, distillery visits we want to have dinners we want to have nights we all go to the pub and catch up but I think that this this exactly like the online tasting thing is hopefully something we can do going forward as well and that might even look like having a night like this in person, but it's a relationship that we are keen with our local Ayrshire independent bottlers that I hope we can just keep going. And anytime you guys have anything you want to bring to the bring to the table and there's going to be a group of folk there that are willing to taste your stuff and give you some honest feedback on it. So um, hopefully the first of many going forward as well. Yeah, I think we'll do this again, definitely. All right, definitely, aye. No, it's been a great group. I always, uh, anyone... I suppose to, I always recommend it just to join this group, even if they're not from here, sure, just Absolutely really fine. friendly group. And oh, yeah. I mean, it seems like the next uh, Lechegg sample that we draw, there's going to be a few people looking to grab a wee sample bottle of it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Any sample, any samples we've got, we can post up as well. I, I, I know I got, I got some camp samples off you, Keith, for the... Uh, the, the Brickle Addy Valance that I had, um, you gave us a couple of those at the Long Row one. You gave us? Uh, aye, Long Row 18, I think it was, and aye. a couple of others. Aye. Uh, aye. The Curran one as well, but the Long Row was incredible in my opinion. Aye, it was unbelievable. Um, I've still got the two Japanese ones sitting there. So. Oh, the Hakushu was the other one, that was it? That was it, aye. aye I've still got that sitting there, so I'm looking forward to trying that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, if anyone wants to drop off that's fine but uh, me and Andy will stick about for a wee bit of <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the Asher Whiskey group sort of tasting night goes off we have this really <laughs> nice <laughs> formal tasting and then it's three in the morning and everybody's falling asleep in the couch I just mentioned Ian about um, 10 minutes ago at the stage um, the last big tasting gun was the arm one, and we were rolling in the second round at this point. <laughs> like, we would just start talking like all night about like arm um, whiskey and things like that. And we were, we were like, at nine o'clock, like, shit, we didn't actually start drinking some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar, we're done it, Jerry. Yes, we may have done that. <laughs> yes, he got our tasting's t- yeah. uh, on about one o'clock in the morning before we finish. Oh, yeah. for sure. But by all means, we can formally draw it to a close, but we're up for a good drink if anyone else is. So, yeah.